Hey everybody, this is Brian, and welcome to the 45th LAMP tutorial. Uh, man, you know, I have tried recording this video like a dozen times, and every time I get interrupted, either the phone rings or the cat projectile vomits, and I'm not going to go into details, it was pretty gross, but... So let's hope we can actually get this video done and post it on YouTube. So what we're going to talk about today is validating and sanitizing user input. And what do I mean by that? You see we have a form here. Pretty simple form. Actually, you see it down here. We just have, you know, enter your email address. And when you type something, and we submit our query, it just, you entered, and then whatever you entered. Not hard to figure out. You know, pretty simple. And you see how we're just using a normal, you know, post variable to get it. And then you entered blah, blah, blah. Well, the problem is email. I entered LOL. LOL's not a uh, valid email. Actually, we could enter just about anything we wanted to into this. and you know it just does it so how do you validate that the data is correct well let's try this filter ver short for variable and then we want the actual variable and we said user and then we need an actual filter you saw it's saying long filter well you guessed it it's just an array item so different types of PHP filters um, you see how they're sanitize and validate. It'll say filter, sanitize, or validate. Well, sanitize is when you're actually changing the data. And we'll get to that in a minute, but validate's really what we want. You can see there's a bunch of them. I mean, so many that we we could probably do another 50 videos just on these, but we're not going to because it's a pretty simple topic. So you say if filter var, um, the variable, and then the filter we're using. And then we're just going to echo out. valid email and then we're going to just throw an else in here I think this video is cursed my cat's over here playing with something and I know he's gonna he's gonna rip the cord of my microphone out he's got me so nervous I can't even type kitty knock it off all right, so we're just going to repost the same data. And it says invalid email, because that's not a valid email. So let's try my email address. Valid email. Now, how does it determine it's a valid email? Well, it follows a structure. It has a somebody at something dot something. For example, we could say me at uh, home.com. Not even sure if that's valid. See how it says valid email? Now when we say valid, it's not checking to see if it's actually a valid email, meaning somebody's going to actually read the email. It's checking to see if the structure of the data is valid. It could be a valid email. For example, let's try this. Brian space at space something space dot com. Actually, let's put a exclamation in there. It looks like it could be kind of an email address. But no, it's not valid because it has spaces, has a special character, things of that nature. So what we're going to do here is we're going to try to sanitize it. And when we say sanitize, what we're saying is we're actually going to try to fix the problem. The user entered something, maybe they goofed something up. We're going to try and recover it. So we're just going to say san equal filter bear. And you guessed it, we need a filter. So we're going to go out to our filter list here and look for, let's see, we got sanitize email. Here we go. And it says removes all special characters ex except letters, digits, and those guys. So let's actually grab that. Go back out here. And let's echo this out. Alright, so we're just going to print this out here. And we're going to repost the same data. And you see how it says the sanitized version is brian at something exclamation dot com. 
Still not perfect, but you can see how it's stripping out special characters. So if they did like uh, B Karen's space on accident at voidrealms.com, it will actually try to sanitize that and it'll actually correct minor mistakes. So that's the difference between validation and sanitizing data. It's pretty important. Um, you should always sanitize and validate your data because let's say you're working with a database. We haven't quite gotten there yet. But let's say we type in something like this. Drop table uh, users. What that would be, and no, this is my disclaimer, this is not a valid SQL injection attack, and don't you ever try to do this on anybody's website, because it's illegal, but um, what this would essentially do is it would go out to the database and say, do you have a table named users, and if so, delete it that would be catastrophic for a website so if somebody typed that into your website hit submit you enter blah well that would actually execute the statement rather than just sanitize it so something you should be aware of and something you should definitely do in practice um, in the real world you would use a, uh, a PHP framework which I'm really debating on should we or should we not cover a framework it's gonna be a massive tutorial series if we do that. I mean, we'll probably be rivaling the cute series where we'll have hundreds of videos, but um, I'm open to suggestions. I was actually looking at the Yi. Is it Yi? Let's go out here and look at this thing. Kind of getting off base here. PHP, why? I, I. I was looking at different PHP frameworks. Yeah, the Yi PHP framework. Ah, there it is. Oh, come on. How embarrassing. Hmm, server not found, really? I wonder if my internet connection died. Or it's my virtual machine being goofy. Anyways, what a framework will give you is, yeah, there it is, the E framework. This is supposedly the best framework out there right now. And what a framework will really do for you is it will make your coding lightning fast because there's already a massive code base written for you. You just have to know how to use it, and that's the trick with frameworks. But wrapping it back into filters, it will have the filters already built in so whenever you're accessing the database it'll filter and sanitize the data for you so you don't have to worry about it so um, some other things we should really touch on here let me scroll through my notes do, 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 do. Mm -hmm. oh yes let's kind of do something similar here let's comment this out I want to show an alternate way of doing this, just real quick and simple. What we're going to do is say if filter has var, and then we're going to say input, whoops, post, because we're posting the data from the phone, and then we're going to say email. Now, where are we getting email from? We're getting it from the name of this input. So that's where we're getting that. So we're saying if filter has variable from input post and it should be named email, ta-da, then do something. And then we'll just uh, we actually, eh, let's actually just type it out. If filter input We're going to say filter validate email. If you're wondering what we're doing, is we're, we're accomplishing the same thing, but we're instead of actually getting the variable manually, you can actually do it through this filter has var and then filter input and then give it the input post and it'll extract it for you. And then we can just say, uh, valid email or invalid email. Let's resend this and it should, yeah, invalid email. So let's type a valid email in there. V 
valid email. So it does essentially the same thing, but instead of you having to extract this, whoops, <laughs> commented out the wrong thing here. Instead of you having to extract the variable yourself, it does it for you automatically. Now, if you wanted to get at that variable, you'd have to actually go out and then you know pull it out through the post variable. So that's all for this tutorial. I know I babbled a little bit. Um, if you guys are interested in learning the E framework, I'm I'm game. I actually I have a massive project I'm working on. That's part of why I'm teaching myself PHP. So if you're interested in learning a framework, I'd be interested in learning it and teaching it. So let me know. That's all. Thanks for watching. Bye.